In this video, we will look at repeating tasks and the particular um, tool that we'll have a look at is the for loop. Okay, an everyday task, um, we may well repeat numerous times. Sometimes we do things again and again until a task is complete. An example of that could be keep washing dishes until they're clean, keep folding clothes until they're all folded, and lots of other different things that we do repeat ourselves on a general basis. In scripts, we do the same thing. An example of that could be keep displaying a menu until the user doesn't want it anymore, or complete a task a set amount of times. So an example of that could be um, maybe reading in five users' details and setting that up so five users are automatically read in. The general term for it is iteration. Okay, so that's something that you will come across when you actually come to do the programming um, next block. Okay, there are lots of different types of iteration. This is just one of them. Okay, so the general syntax is for, enlist, do. So the layout of it, the general syntax, we have for is the keyword, and then we put a name in there, and then we have in, and then list. We do some set commands, and then we keep doing them until we have gone through the full list. And when you get to done, you just come back up again, and it just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating until we have gone through all of the items in the list. Best way to see this is to have a look at an example. Okay, so make sure you're inside your scripts folder and we want to create a new file called forexample1.sh. Okay, so I'm just going to explain what's happening here. As you can see, I have got lots of comments. As usual, as you know, it's good programming practice to do that. So we have got bin bash, the author's name, you would put yours, the date, you would put the current date. So this file is an example of a simple menu using a for loop. Okay, um, the variable i, as we can see here, keeps account of the number of times that the for loop has executed. Okay, and it will continue to execute until it reaches five. Okay, so I have got four, which is the keyword, i in one to five. So what happens is i takes on the first value here. The first value here is one. So we come down here to the do. So Underneath do is everything that will be done whenever the for loop executes. So we have got echo, this is loop number, and then I have got dollar one. So we know that the start of the loop, the value takes on one. So we'll write out this is loop number one. Then it comes down to done and it comes back up again and it checks to see if there's any more loops that it has to do. Well, we know it has to go up to five, so it has to execute again. So this time it's for i equal to two, and then we go down to the do loop, then echo, this is loop number, and i has the value of two, so it will write out number two. And then we come down here to the end of the for loop, Go back up again. This time i is incremented again and it becomes 3. So we go down to the do section and do whatever is in the do section. So we write out this is loop number 3. And then we go down to done again. Come back up. Increment i by 1, which is done automatically for us. So it's still within the range one to five, so that's fine. So we go down to do and echo, 
this is loop number dollar i so write out four so we come back down to done come back up and now we increment i again so this is the last time we do the loop because we go from one to five so i takes on the value of five so i keeps count of the number of times the loop has executed so we start off with the do this is loop number dollar i five okay so we'll write that out we've done our loop five times we've reached five so we go down to done and that's it so all that happens in this program is it will write out this is loop number one this is loop number two this is loop number three this is loop number four this is loop number five Okay, so now that we have saved the file, we do need to alter the permissions and then execute the file. So the exact same way that we've done it before. So we would do chmod 775 and then the file name and then run the program. And this is an example of the output that you would get from the program. So this is loop number one, two, three, four and five. Okay, have a look at the exercises. If there's anything you don't understand, please let me know.